finally, the Premier League returns with Game Week 5. But before we predict that, we're going to take a look back at my Game Week 4 predictions, see how well I did, and if I got any of the predictions right. And I can't actually remember if I did. <laughs> Um, we're going to start with Friday and Luton Town versus West Ham United. So I predicted 2-1 to West Ham and it was 2-1 to West Ham. So yes, I got at least one prediction correct. And top flight football returned to Kenilworth Road. However, didn't end well for Luton. But the Hatters were hard done by with a penalty shout that was dismissed. So it, it could have been 2 all. Bowen opened the scoring before Zuma doubled the Hammers lead. Probably thought the ball was a cat. Anderson pulled one back though for the hosts, but it just wasn't enough. Those VAR angles are crazy. <laughs> then we move on to the Saturday fixtures and Sheffield United versus Everton. And I predicted 1-0 to Sheffield United. It was actually a two-all draw. And it was two teams who'd been struggling to score goals played out a four-goal clash. Pickford was great for Everton and largely saved their blushes throughout this match. The Toffees opened the scoring before Archer equalised for the Blades. And they doubled the lead before half-time as the ball came off Pickford who couldn't really do anything about it, to be fair. Or Dan Juma leveled things once again. Still though, each side is searching for a win, but it was a very fun match to watch, to be honest. I never thought I'd be saying about Sheffield United versus Everton, but here we are. And then we move on to Manchester City versus Fulham. And I predicted 3-0 to the Citizens. And it was actually 5-1. And you know what? I predicted Holland would cook. And boy was I right, as he netted his seventh hat-trick for Man City. It was Alvarez who opened the scoring though, before Tim Ream leveled things for the Fulham. Ake controversially added a second, but the rest, as they say, is history. And City continue their winning streak. And then we move on to Chelsea versus Nottingham Forest. Now I predicted two all draw, and it's actually one nil to Forest. And Nottingham Forest are cooking. Forest grabbed their first away win of the season against Chelsea. There was an error in the Chelsea midfield. That's a midfield with two 100 million players mind that Forest jumped on, leading to Alanga scoring the only goal of the game. Forest's defence stayed resolute to keep Chelsea at bay and claimed an important three points. And what a win it was. My god. And then we move on to Burnley vs Tottenham Hotspur. Now I predicted 3-1 to Tottenham. It was actually 5-2. <laughs> Ange Ball was in full effect as Spurs came from behind to beat Burnley. It was Son who equalised for the visitors before Romero and Madison added to the tally. Son then scored two more to claim the second hat-trick of the week. The Clarets did grab a consolation goal, but they were absolutely dominated at Turf Moor. And that Tottenham, Tottenham are cooking something special this season. I know we say this quite a lot about Tottenham, but they've got potential here, especially under Ange Postecoglou. Someone's, someone's cooking in London. Then we've on to Brentford versus Bournemouth. I predicted 2-0 to Brentford, and it was actually a 2 all draw. The Bees opened the scoring as Jensen whipped in a free kick, and Brentford remains quite dominant throughout, to be honest. But the Cherries fought back and Solanke leveled things up before Brooks scored his first Premier League goal in 749 days to put the Cherries ahead. What a story that is. But Mbwemo struck deep into stoppage time to rescue a point for the Bees. Then we went to Brighton Hove Albion vs Newcastle United. I predicted a 2 all draw and it was 3-1 to Brighton. It was a hat-trick of hat-tricks as Evan Ferguson put three past the Magpies. Newcastle started brightly, but it was the Irishman who opened the scoring at the Amex before he added a second with an absolute rocket and then sealed the hatchet from just inside the box. Wilson did grab a consolation goal, but it was not enough to inspire a comeback, and Brighton just looked brilliant throughout that match. Like, there was no stopping him, and definitely no stopping Evan Ferguson from scoring. Wow, what player. They went on to Crystal Palace versus Wolverhampton Wanderers, and I predicted 2 0 to Palace, and it was actually 3 2. It was a five goal thriller with all the action coming in the second half. Palace opened the scoring through Edouard before Wolves equalised through Huang Hee Chan. Eze then put Palace ahead again before Edouard made it a brace for himself. Wolves did pull one back, but it just wasn't enough to secure a point. And then we've gone to Liverpool versus Aston Villa. And I predicted a 2 0 draw and it was actually 3 0. Liverpool maintained their unbeaten run after comfortably beating Villa. Sobersight opened the scoring within three minutes to give the hosts an early lead, which was then doubled after Cash put in his own net. Nothing he can do about it though. He goes from scoring a hat-trick to scoring an own goal, you know, what a player. Salah then put the villains to bed with a cheeky finish from a corner. And finally, Arsenal versus Manchester United. Now I predicted 2-1 to Arsenal, and it was actually 3-1. And fucking have that, United. Like, this was definitely the game of the week as the Gunners held off United to claim all three points. Rashford opened the scoring as he put the Red Devils ahead with a brilliant strike before Odegaard responded with his own. Another brilliant strike to level things in the capital. Garnacho had a goal ruled out for offside, before Rice struck in the 96th minute to put the host's head, before Jesus really put the nail in the coffin and made it 
But Maguire and Evans in defence, you know, in this day and in this day and age, they've got Maguire and Evans in defence. What are you? Wh why? What? What? I'm, I'm dumbfounded. But yeah, have that United. That's what you get for cheating, frauds. So those were my game week four predictions. As you can see, I only got one correct. So we're not really cooking there. But that's besides the point. We're going to move in to the meat and potatoes of this video the game week five predictions and we're going to start off with the saturday fixtures no friday night football this week for us as we look at wolves versus liverpool wolves host liverpool in the west midlands as they look to grab their second win of the season liverpool on the other hand have been soaring recently staying unbeaten in the league winning three out of their four and looking a lot better than they did last season wolves have not been enjoying that same run of form though only going one win in their last four matches and they don't particularly look like they've improved to be honest it's not been the best of starts for the west midlands outfit and unfortunately i don't see things getting any better for them here I'm going to say 3-1 to Liverpool. I think it'll be a fairly comfortable win for Liverpool. As I've mentioned, they're playing some brilliant football this season and that revamped midfield is doing the business. Wolves don't look too good. Wolves don't look to be struggling for goals like they were last season, but a lot of their chances have gone begging and they're not really brilliant at the back either, which has just been costing them. Jose Sarr has been saving their blushes with some brilliant performances, but he's going to be caught into action a lot against his Liverpool side and I just think Liverpool will be too much for them to handle. However, the Reds will be without Van Dijk and Trent Alexander-Arnold, so they will be weaker than usual. But even with those absences, I do see Liverpool claiming those three points. I just I don't see what threat Wolves could pose to them, to be honest, even at the Molyneux. So yeah, I think it should be a fairly comfortable three points for Liverpool. And then move on to Fulham versus Luton Town. Luton travel to the capital to face Fulham at Craven Cottage in what could be a very interesting match. Fulham haven't looked particularly great after their star strike departed, and look to be struggling to score goals now. Luton are also struggling to score goals, but for a newly promoted side that is to be expected. You know, it might be a hot take, but on paper I think both sides look pretty similar at the moment, especially a Fulham without Mitrovic. Luton are one of the two sides who have not grabbed a win yet this season, whereas Fulham have only won on the first day of the season and have not managed to win since. I'm going to say 2 to Fulham though. Unfortunately for the Hatters, I can't see them grabbing their first win yet. I do think it will come at home though. While Fulham are less prolific in front of net, than last season they still do possess goal scorers in their ranks and have shown that they can still score goals. Luton don't look that bad to be fair and their home form will play a huge part in if they are able to survive this season or even beat Derby's points record but their issue comes from if they go behind first. From what I've seen they just don't seem to be able to fight back enough and that issue is only compounded away from home. So I do think the Cottage will grab another win at Craven Cottage and I want to say Luton will put up a, a tough fight and they are they can be tough to break down but as soon as that first goal goes in they just melt away. So something really to be done about the mentality but yeah I, I don't think they'll grab a win at Craven Cottage. And then we move on to Tottenham Hotspur versus Sheffield United. Spurs have gone off to a really good start with Ange Ball so far looking good. Spurs players look to have bought into the philosophy and it has paid dividends so far. Sheffield United on the other hand having off to the best of starts and a still in search of that first win of the season. And you know what? I don't think they'll grab it at the capital. Sheffield United have not had a great start to the season, but managed to grab an all-important draw last week to get some points on the board. As I mentioned though, Spurs are looking good on Ange, and have shown some real prowess in the new system. They don't really show any signs of missing Kane, like Son and Madison have been cooking and providing the goals in his absence. Son, of course, being one of the three hat-trick scorers last week too. So, you know, he's he looks like he's had a renaissance this season. Like, he wasn't too good last season, but this season, he's looking good. I'm going to say 3-1 to Tottenham. Unfortunately for the Blades, it doesn't look like you'll get a win this season and that search for the all-important win will continue. Spurs have been in some brilliant form. They're one of the five sides currently enjoying an unbeaten run and I see that being extended here. They play a brilliant brand of attacking football and are going to cause a lot of problems for Sheffield United, especially when they go forward. I can see the Blades grabbing a goal because they do have that quality within their squad, but they're not good enough to beat the Spurs side, especially in London. But, you know, they, they showed they could score against Man City and I'm sure they'll score against Tottenham. But in London, it's a, a very different kettle of fish to playing at Sheffield. So, yeah, 3-1 may be a conservative estimate after what we've seen from Tottenham. They're cooking. They're cooking something. Then we move on to West Ham versus Manchester City. The two sides enjoying great starts to their season face off in the London Stadium. Although, it'll be tough to follow that Simon charity match. West Ham have enjoyed an unbeaten start to the season, whereas Manchester City is the only team to have not dropped points this season. The Hammers will make it hard for City as they're playing some good football at the moment, and the players they've brought in with the rice money have been some brilliant additions to Moyes' side. I have no doubt that West Ham are going to make it tough for City, 
But this is Manchester City we're talking about. There's a reason they've yet to drop points this season. There's a reason they've won the treble. And let's not mention Erling Haaland, who net himself a hat-trick against Fulham. Although, I can't see the repeat of that in the capital. I'm going to say 3-2 to Man City. As I alluded to, I do think it'll be a really tough game for both sides, and I can see West Ham really making it hard for City. However, I do think the citizens have what it takes to claim another three points. Man City are a very strong side. They've got some very strong signings in the window and really strengthened an already strong squad. But I'm also impressed with West Ham's business this window, and especially James Ward-Prowse, who, you know what? Maybe I underestimated him because he's already made his mark, already scored a goal, and is looking to thrive in West Ham. So... I'll hold my hands up. I do apologise, James Ward-Prowse. You're not just a free-kick merchant. Now, this should be good watchers. As I said, both sides are playing some good football, but I do see City keeping their winning streak going. But barely. I think West Ham will make it tough. And they move on to Aston Villa versus Crystal Palace. Villa hosts the Eagles at Villa Park, with both sides having started the season decently. Palace just sitting above the Villains. Villa have been playing some good football under Emery, as shown by the European qualification, and the quality of players they captured during the summer were phenomenal. They were playing well this season too, until they faced Liverpool. But I mean, at Anfield, Liverpool are a very hard side to beat anyway, so there's no real shame in that. Crystal Palace have not disappointed either, and look like they may have gone over their goal scoring issues, but that does remain to be seen. Of the two though, I do think Aston Villa are currently looking like the stronger side, but that's not by much. That They are looking quite evenly matched at the moment, despite the calibre of players Villa have bought in. I'm going to say 2-1 to Villa. I do think it'll be a close match between the two sides, they're both quite evenly matched, as I mentioned, but Villa are the better side. And at Villa Park, you know, they have the crowd behind them, so they've always got that bonus when you play at home. Palace haven't shown enough to say they're over the goal-scoring issues just yet. So this match will be a good opportunity to see if they have fixed that issue, or if it was just a blip last time out. This match will be a good challenge for both sides to see where they're at this season, and maybe an indicator of how they'll progress further. I think Villa are the better side here, though, and will continue to cook under Emery. And then we move on to Manchester United versus Brighton. The Seagulls travelled to Old Trafford to face Manchester United. And this is Manchester United's side that doesn't look too good at the moment. And you know what? It's also a Brighton side that are looking good at the moment. <laughs> Manchester United saw themselves beat by Arsenal, whilst Brighton, well, Evan Ferguson, dominated Newcastle United. United aren't in a great spot at the moment with multiple injury problems and are honestly just a shambles of a club in general. Brighton have got off to a good start this season, only losing once, and there's no doubt they're going to cause some issues for Man United at Old Trafford. I'm going to say 2-1 to Brighton. I think Brighton will do the business in Manchester. United were shocked when they faced Forest at Old Trafford and were lucky to win. But Brighton are a far more potent and a deadlier side who have to keep up with United and keep them at bay, I think. As mentioned, United have been hit with a fair few injuries, mainly to their defence. And there are also some legal issues surrounding Anthony, who's been rightfully suspended. But Brighton, you know, they're still suffering as well, though they are better off. Um, in terms of injuries, but they'll be without Ferguson and Inciso. But I think even without those plays, they still have the quality to score goals. And uh, they also signed Ansu Fati, which is just insane. If you told me Brighton would sign Ansu Fati probably about three, four years ago, I would not have believed you, but here we are. <laughs> and you know what? It may be a rogue shout from me, but I do see Brighton being able to claim all three points in Manchester, unless VAR has its say. We move on to Newcastle United versus Brentford. The Bees travelled to St James's Park to face the Magpies. Unfortunately for the Magpies though, they've not got off to the best of starts this season and couldn't found themselves in 14th after only picking up one win, although that was a pretty spectacular win as they destroyed Villa on the opening day. They look worse than last season though despite having a stronger squad, whereas Brentford on the other hand find themselves in 8th with two wins to their name and we feel that they can get something from this clash. Brentford have been consistently performing as you would expect from them and that is without Tony who is still serving his suspension with Mbwemo and Wissa scoring most of the goals to keep the Bees performing and grabbing those all-important results. As mentioned, Newcastle are not performing as expected, especially after the impressive season they had previously, and this is with their improved squad as well, which makes this even more shocking. But I'm going to say a one-all draw. I can see Newcastle's woes continuing here, as I don't think they'll be able to break down this solid Brentford side. I'm sure they'll score, and the backing of St. James's Park will no doubt help them, which is why I don't have Brentford down as grabbing a result, but it's not looking good for the Magpies. Brentford always seem to turn up against these bigger sides and I'm sure they'll give Newcastle a lot of trouble in their own backyard but I do think the quality that Newcastle possess and the amateur at St James Park might just tip it so that Brentford are unable to gain all three points but if there's a side that do it it probably would be Brentford so you know 
I expect a draw, but I wouldn't be surprised if Brentford won, to be honest. And then we move on to the Sunday fixtures, and we start off with Bournemouth versus Chelsea. The Cherries host Chelsea at Dean Court in a match they can be confident in getting something from. Chelsea have not been performing well this season, despite the large amounts of money they've spent on players. Now, part of that could be down to getting the players to gel and play well together, but still, with the money they spend, you know, they should be playing better. Bournemouth on the other hand, have not spent that much in comparison, and have had much better performances. Although, saying that, Chelsea do sit two points above them in the table. If we judge the money they spent on the performances, Bournemouth are definitely much better. There's no doubt this Chelsea side possesses a lot of quality, but there are always issues with lots of new players playing together, so they, they need time to gel. This does seem to be the crux of their issues at the moment now. Despite having less points on the board though, Bournemouth have performed alright this season and look better than Chelsea in some aspects, with each side seeing fairly even at the moment, and because of that I'm going to say a 2 or draw. I think it'll be a draw between these two. Bournemouth's best performances have come at home to these bigger sides, and I think they'll be able to give Chelsea a good game here. Bournemouth recruited well in the summer and have strengthened an already decent side and look to play some attacking football under Areola. While we haven't seen that in full flow for Bournemouth at the moment, they have shown glimpses in previous matches, so it'll be very interesting to see how they play against Potter's Chelsea. They've been more dropped point for Chelsea, but their performances don't inspire a lot of confidence at the moment, so that's really all they can expect. And then we move on to Everton vs Arsenal. Ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho, this should be a tasty one. The Toffees host the Gunners at Goodison as they look to record their first win of the season. Now last time this clash happened, we saw a shocked Everton win as Sean Dyche marked his return at a time where Arsenal were deep into their title push. Unfortunately, I don't think we'll see such scenes this time around, but I have no doubt that Everton will still endeavour to make it tough for Arsenal, you know, as Dyche Ball is known for. Arsenal haven't gotten off to as good of a start as they did last season, currently find themselves in fourth, but are currently part of the unbeaten club not losing a match since this season. Arsenal aren't as lethal in attack as they were last season, but still possess a lot of potent attacking quality in their side. Um, we won't mention Kai Havertz. Everton, on the other hand, are struggling for goals, but the signing of Beto will be something to remedy that. Though it remains to be seen how he'll adapt to the Premier League, but he's a solid player, so maybe he can do something for them. Though saying that, I'm going to say 2-0 to Arsenal. I can't really see Everton getting anything from this match, but I don't think anyone's expecting them to either. Arsenal are a very strong attacking side, and while I do think Everton will try to make it hard for the Gunners, I don't think they have the quality for that to be honest. Watching Everton's performances this season haven't inspired confidence, and when they did grab a result last season, it just doesn't feel like we'll be able to here. Pickford will save the Toffees blushes because without him he could easily be more than two, but he's put out some brilliant saves already this season and I'm sure he'll make numerous more in this match as well. And moving on to the Monday fixtures and we start off and end off with Nottingham Forest vs Burnley. Nottingham Forest host Burnley at the city ground, mere weeks after losing to them in that dreadful cup tie. Though, despite that disappointing result, I do think this will be a much different game. Forest currently find themselves in ninth after making up two wins, are looking to build on that here. Burnley on the other hand find themselves winless in the league and currently sit bottom of the league as well. Though, Burnley have shown flashes of brilliance but just haven't had enough to get those games over the line. Now I do think this is partly down to the fact that Burnley signed quite a few players during their return to the Premier League and it will always take time for those players to gel together, and they look to play a brand of attacking football under company, and they have shown potential, but that's really yet to click in the Premier League the way it did in the Championship. Now, obviously, these um, two leagues are fathoms apart, but Burnley are slowly getting there, I think. Forest have started the season well with two wins to their name, and look to be in a much better shape than they were last season. The Reds performed well in their win against Chelsea, an away win as well. I know those are things that are very rare for us, but we grabbed an away win against Chelsea. It was a hugely important result and showing that we are very serious about cementing ourselves in the Premier League. Very impressive result. And you know what? I'm going to say 2-0 to Forrest. I think Forrest will grab a win at the City ground. That cup match against Burnley was some of the worst football I've seen us play under Cooper. But with it being more of a reserve squad, you know, players who've never played together or not even played in the Forest system before, you know... that. It, it was boring, but I think it was expected. And I'm sure that our first team will be able to give it a much better go. At least, I hope so, or I want a refund. <laughs> the City ground was a fortress last season, and we're looking to do the same here. Already claiming one win this season against Sheffield United. Burnley don't look great at the moment. They're still struggling to adapt to the Premier League and play the brand of football that they want to play. Their squad does have a lot of potential, and I have no doubt they will kick on. But it looks like it will take a bit longer than fans would perhaps like. They'll make the game tough though, but I do see Forrest giving all points in the East Midlands. And hopefully, we don't play like we did in the Cup. <laughs> but yeah, so those have been my Game Week 5 Premier League predictions. 
again I'm hoping to get more than one right but if I had to get one right it would definitely be that forest result please <laughs> I've been O2GT I hope you have enjoyed please do leave any predictions you have in the comments down below or tell me if I have zero ball knowledge have a brilliant day peace